welcome back to another episode of It's All Been Trekked Before. This time, the Omega Glory. I pledge allegiance to It's All Been Trekked Before. Uh, some other things you can check out here on the IABD Presents Network. Stark Story Snacks. They're short. They're stories. They're snacks. They're bite-sized snacks. Check them out. Stark Story Snacks. Another show you can check out. She's right here. She's Marianne. She's got her own show on here. Tell them about it, Marianne. Welcome to Marianne's Macabre Movie Review. We talk about old movies. We talk about new movies, and they're all horror and spooky and maybe scary, maybe psychological thrillers. Uh, it all depends on what you're, we always debate, well, this isn't a horror, but yes, in some, per, in some people's minds it is. So we talk about that and we discuss. Check it out. It's literally from the mouth of the people doing the show, not me. So uh, check that out right now. Check out The Omega Glory. And it's all been trekked before. You don't want to say anything, Keith? Uh, I, I wouldn't say that it's, the show is actually funnier than it sounds there. <laughs> so I think Keith's coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome out to another episode of It's All Been Trekked Before. Ooh, two of your hosts are here. This is Steven. This is Jimmy Jerome. And we're it for you tonight, so yeah. deal with that. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, it would be nice to get some other opinions in here. But we're going to do our best for you. Um, we're talking The Omega Glory. Yeah, uh, and my memory of this was that I loved it when I first saw it, and then I didn't like it the rest of my life. <laughs> and I rediscovered, as we'll get into, why I don't, I might have thought I really hated it. But the episode's a lot better and a lot more interesting than I remembered. The first uh, episode is. It's yes. two, it's two yeah, completely it, different it's episodes. It's true. It's very true. And, and not only that, there's so much going on. And and I was thinking about this as I watched that this is one of the original pilot ideas. It was it? Actually, yeah, early on. And uh, well, This was written by Gene Roddenberry. Yeah. Which and, I feel like the the latter part, the really bad yes. part, has Roddenberry's fingers all over it. And that's what I thought about when I was reading up on that is that the, uh, a couple actually wrote the original stuff, and they didn't think it was up to snuff, so Roddenberry took it on upon himself. To... Uh, he's the only one credited on <laughs> yes. for this yep. one. Yep, and, uh, Yeah, that ending was all him. Oh. It's all so, him. It's so terrible. It is. I mean, it's just... It, there's It's it's terrible on so many levels that we'll, we'll get into. <laughs> Let's talk about the good parts first. Yes. Um, so it was very insurrection-type story, the movie Star Trek yeah. Insurrection. Yeah, Where we've got this planet that may have the Fountain of Youth, and a Starfleet mm-hmm. captain is willing to toss out the Prime Directive That's if right. he thinks he can find the Fountain of Youth for everybody. Yeah, and I always remembered, in my mind, I thought that, that Tracy was actually behind the, the the revolt on the... Or not the revolt, the fight on the planet. And he was... That was oh, Captain thing. Tracy? Yeah, Captain yeah. Tracy. He wanted to run things, but no. no, he was more obsessed with the Fountain of Youth aspect, which I thought was interesting. And... And, and, and I'm trying to remember the actor, but... Um, Morgan Woodward. Morgan Woodward, um, who Best was also... for... He's cool, also... Cool Hand Luke. Yes, and he was also in Dagger of the Mind. Oh, uh, yeah, he was. So he, he was familiar. He was uh, Simon Van Gelder, I think, in that episode. He was. And uh, I remember we loved his, his acting in that. Uh, and he was crazy. And then eventually he gets more and more crazy in this episode. Oh, my God. Um, hey, according to IMDb, he's still alive, but he's like 92 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah. He doesn't have a death listed on here, although he hasn't been active as an actor in over 10 years. I think he was one of the guards in Cool Hand Luke, I think. Uh, one uh, of the guys he was the Boss Godfrey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's what he's most famous for, Star Trek's third, so you can see that his career's not huge. They did 55 episodes of Dallas back in the 80s. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember him now. Yeah, um, him now. Yeah. Played Punk Anderson, remember that? Huh. I never watched old Dallas. But yeah, he's got quite a few credits. Um, what, was, what was his insignia on his uniform? That was for his ship. Because oh, in the original that makes series, sense. they all have different ones. That's right. That Except makes sense. for some reason, Discovery, they all have the Enterprise one, which right. makes no sense. <laughs> no. Um, it looked like a, uh, a some kind of like a Picasso. Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what that was. Um, I, I thought like... it was interesting, but way too busy. The Enterprise got the yeah. good one. And Most of the other ones are too busy. Well, I like that that was the only clothing he wore. He's like, I'm still got to wear this. Maybe mm-hmm. so. So everyone there knew he doesn't have to fit in. Yeah. Yeah. I. <sighs> so yeah, I mean, I get the a uh, certain sense. I get the instinct that this guy is going to abandon his principles because he thinks what he's found so important. But right. on the other hand, he really goes overboard. Yeah, and it, it's a quick... It's a very fast... 
it's one to one to zero to sixty really fast on the crazy scale. Well, I think um, he's already sixty that's and crazy true. before true. we see him. Yeah, I think the zero to sixty happened off screen. That's fair. Before the episode, <laughs> uh, I think he tries to hide it at first. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But he's already he's already so. It's like once he made the decision to abandon his principles, he's so locked in on it that anybody that threatens it. Just... And I guess there is something to them talking about him losing. His people, his crew. Yeah. But it still seemed like... Yeah. He didn't seem that broken up at this no, point about it. No, no. Um, which is weird. Not, they don't attribute that to the sickness. Yeah, I, I don't think he's a realistic Star Trek captain. I can see some other character, but to rise to the rank of captain of a starship... It didn't make sense. No. It didn't make sense. And, it, and I, I'm trying to remember if... Kirk says he knew him at the beginning. <laughs> Probably. I thought it. I, and there's only 12 Constitution class starships. Well, and it's, and clearly his was a Constitution class. Well, and I was thinking about how many crazy starship captains we end up having. I mean, well, after well, after this, yeah. then I institute so a mental fitness evaluation. <laughs> well, uh, which we could really use in the White House right now. <laughs> uh, well, and I was thinking of Beyond was the last last yeah. trip, and we have a star a, a, a captain who. Yeah. His arc was longer and different. I was going to say, I, I bought that one a little bit more. There sure. was a lot more to it. Yes. Uh, I, they also called him a star captain. Yeah, I Not a too. starship captain. So I feel like maybe like that was in the early script and they just never fixed it. There were a handful of inconsistencies with regular Star Trek canon. Like... Not to jump ahead, but sure. Spock like controlling the woman with his yeah. eyes. Yeah. You, know, uh, you mean where Spock used the Force? <laughs> yeah. It reminded me of the recent episode where he like was sending telepathic signals through the wall, mm-hmm. but it's not like a power he uses later or that we see Vulcans use later. Well, and uh, again, I'm going to use the reference to the Force, the Star Star Wars that there, it's mentioned often there that it works on the weak minded. Yeah. And I thought it was telling that the person he used it on was the woman. I mean, she was closest to the communicator. Fair. But I just thought it was... I don't know if that she was... She wasn't intended. weak-minded. When they were in the cell, she was fighting just as much as... That's true. She wasn't was. weak. That's fair. That's fair. Sarah. Sarah? Sarah? I don't uh, know. Yeah, but it was... Yeah, when that happened, it's like, okay. I, why didn't he use this earlier? <laughs> Why didn't he use it when they were in the jail cell? Why didn't he use it in so many other episodes? Right. And you so, can just mind control your way out of situations. The, uh, another one of those weird things was the phaser power packs. Yeah. This might be the first and last time we hear about power packs. I, you know, at least I, I'm trying to... It's hard to separate novels from yeah. the what? canon. I swear in novels they sometimes have to take power packs if they're on extended missions. Or and we, they, they have talked before about phasers... They're not everlasting. They right. they run out of power. So, so yeah, that makes power sense. packs, especially so. if Cap Tracy Cap Tracy is like held right. off a whole army of people right. with this, right? And it's still running, but it's running them. Yeah, and that was we can get into that when we get all the end stuff. But there's a lot of Vietnam Cold War analogies going on there and stuff. But when, when, that, when that phaser dies, it dies. It doesn't like get weak. <laughs> oh it no, just, it's just it's done. done. Just done. Done. Like, just in time. Yeah, is of course, the last moment. But yeah. So the parallels, yeah, metaphors. There's a few of those. Yeah, there there was a lot going on there. Uh, uh, so, you know, when he's talking about the, it, while we're talking about the phaser packs and them running out and him mm-hmm. fighting off savages, mm-hmm. it definitely sounded. It definitely plays like, you know, a uh, Vietnam analogy there. That mm-hmm. you know, we went in with all the power of the United sure. States. We have all these things and. The Viet Cong just kept coming, coming because they just didn't care. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and in a derogatory sense, they were savages. And in a way, they were. They were uh, uh, in, in the sense that they were uh, they weren't as technologically advanced, technologically advanced yeah. as us. But obviously, they um, it was their country, it was their homeland. Um, and among the other things we can get into about Vietnam, but I thought that was definitely uh, uh, Roddenberry using that analogy. And then all the the other Cold War stuff. The when we get into the Yangs and the comms and all that stuff. Okay, and so the Yangs and the comms. Uh, so setting aside for a second. I forgot we'll how terrible the we'll names get how terrible and everything that is. But they should have stuck with Yangs and comms because yeah. at one point they say yellows and whites. Yeah. And that really oh felt Oh my god. Wrong. That really felt wrong. Uh, that yeah. so felt wrong. The yellow civilization, yeah. they called it. And I was yeah. like, oh. I, <laughs> I, I, I cringed bad. Yeah. And I'm trying to think, is that... 
modern sensibilities clashing with 60s, or would that have been wrong in the 60s? I feel like it would have been... Not... I feel like it would have been wrong any time. Yeah, I maybe mean... Maybe I'm wrong. I, I mean, George Takei's in the episode, but he's not in any of that part. No. But... A lot and of Asian I, actors in this episode. The, yeah. So that's Yeah, good. so, I mean, and I guess if they went from the idea of... of no, it still doesn't make sense, because, I mean, they're, they're obviously back then, there was the Yellow Menace and the Red Menace, and they're both involved. And, yeah. But it just... It, it really, that line... I don't remember that me. line from watching it God 30 no. years or 40 years ago, but, um, yeah, that's just like... Err. And... Mm. Speaking of memorable lines, though, there is one that Captain Tracy says that as soon as he started saying it, I'm like, I know that line, where he's telling Kirk, like, Were you, would you fight back? Are you just going to stand there and let him kill? He'll, he'll, he'll oh, yeah, over. yeah. Yeah, I was like, that's a famous line. I forgot it came from this episode. Yeah. I don't even remember what the whole thing is uh, now. Um, it, well, essentially, it was if they attack, you'll fight. If they attack, you're going to fight, right? Yeah. You're not just going to roll over, despite the your ideals and the prime directive. And <laughs> so it's like, um, ah, I wish I could get the exact quote. Let me see if I can find it real quick. But because it it is like a a very interesting quote, it's a memorable quote, and I get that. Uh, I just I forgot it was. The Captain Tracy being crazy. Well, no, it's my thing. I mean, I know he wants the serum, but it's why is he so obsessed with defeating the Yangs? And is he in charge? I mean, I, I couldn't... Yeah, clearly he's in charge. Yeah. The, the Yang... Or not the Yangs, because he's with the Combs. The co- Combs? Yeah. Combs? Combs, Combs. Whatever. Uh, they clearly like saw the phaser and were like, okay, you, you win. We're yeah, going to help you right, now. Right. We're your servants. Yeah. Which, you know... They have, they're warlike people. They've been fighting right. the Yangs for a while. You'd think they'd be like, oh, wow, that's high tech. We're with you. He falls asleep. They steal it from him. Right. And yeah, we're done. Right. It's and not that, done. Right. It's not it, that complicated. That's not what happened. No. and doesn't make sense. It, Unless they were worshiping him as a god the way the Yangs ended up trying to worship. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I, that's the way I thought I remembered it or I thought it was something along those lines. And I, I, like you said, I guess he was in charge, but... I, I forgot uh, that the Yangs. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about it. <laughs> Look, you can do an alternate Earth history episode. Just don't have it come out of nowhere on an alien planet that yeah. everything lines up exactly. And I thought even the names and the documents. Yeah, and the flag, oh, yeah, it was just so. That just makes no sense well, whatsoever. And Spock even says it's almost impossible that this could have happened. It's like, right. yeah, and I know what they're saying is they think Tracy. Was it brought that stuff? No, or no, Tracy had been there that long. Right, right, exactly. It was, so it's like, it was like, oh, it's the same, they had the same history as you did, but yeah. you avoided this war and they in, right, entered in this the, war. The bacteriological wars of the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> but Thank nobody, I mean, they wrote the Constitution word for word. They had the Pledge of Allegiance word for yeah, word. Yeah. They had the United States the flag. flag. It just makes no it's sense. It's such a terrible... And, like, it's, you know, the episode, like I said, it had almost too much going on already, yeah. but still, uh, you know, the 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 disease, the serum, uh, the, 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 the crazy captain. The serum was an interesting story. I, it was, yeah. It's, it's like Ron and Mary got in. It's like, I don't know how to end this. I'm going to do this other yeah, thing. Yeah, I completely forgot about all that. And then, yeah. you know, I love the way that... I actually like that, you know, it's they introduced the concept of, like, well, yeah, he's this guy's 407 years old. Yeah, so all you got to do is do, 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 if we can capture this, blah, blah, blah. And then I love the science coming out that yeah. McCoy's like, no, here's the deal. Right. They're that way because evolutionary. Cause they're, they're, yeah, yeah like, evolutionary. It's not going to work for us otherwise. Right. Which like, is neat. Yeah, I thought that was great. And I, I, like the, great term. I like the solving of the issue of, oh, no, we don't need an antidote. You're, right. You've been here long enough, yeah. you're cured. Except, of course, when the security just beamed out the end. That, that's the I thought episode. that, too. Is, I it's, thought that, too. Like, okay, Captain, we've, we've captured them. Ready to beam up? You Hold guys go wait. You guys have to wait 12 hours. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I thought the same thing. Like, <laughs> you might want to tell them that right now before they, before they leave too, too soon. Oh. And but, why didn't they react to Sulu? Like, oh, you're a cone. You right, know? yeah, exactly. I, I think that's fair. Yeah, and, and there's that whole... <laughs> while we're in the bad part of the episode... Yeah. The whole part, and it's just one of those things we've talked about before where all of a sudden, it's something Roger Ebert always talked about where the episode would be over if everyone wasn't an idiot. So yeah. the whole section where Tracy all of a sudden, who has been killing all of these Yangs over the however many years he's been there, like slaughtering them with phasers, hundreds and hundreds, they kept coming. Now they're going to listen to him tell them, well, I'm not evil, it's Kirk and Spock, they're the evil ones, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And 
Spock all of a sudden doesn't talk. <laughs> yeah. And well, the, they don't know what to the do. The thing that really bothered me is they're like, listen for his heart. He doesn't have one. And McCoy's like, well, it's in a different place. And then they listen to Spock, and they're like, he doesn't have a heart. Spock should just say, it's right here. Yeah, and exactly. Boy, You're right. The, the episode is over. Or not oh, the episode over. But either way, that problem is solved. But it was just so... Yeah. Oh, that whole part is just so handy. Well, I mean, and... really, this episode should have been 15 minutes shorter. I know they... <laughs> because that's when they solved the disease and everything. Yeah. You can spend another couple minutes yeah. tying up the Tracy, but the whole thing with where they're captured by the eggs just doesn't fit with the rest of the episode. No, it's... And so you needed to either take longer to get to the ending or make a shorter episode. I know they weren't allowed to make a shorter episode, but... Right, right. Yeah, I, yeah the... The, the, the B story or the A story or whatever, once you solve the, the disease... Or you could have... <laughs> really drawn out the mystery at the beginning. I mean, we've been yeah. over to the Empty Constitution. It was right. creepy. That right. was interesting. We got found the crystals. Of course, McCoy figured out quickly. He should. But, like, the, there could have been more there before he got the chance to figure it out. Uh, he does say they're 96, we're 96% water, I think. Yeah. Apparently, we're closer to 75%. Is, uh, what, yeah. is what I read. But Yeah, I think you're right. But uh, maybe in space. Maybe in space. Maybe you, in space they have more water. water. <laughs> or maybe in the future humans evolve to be more water filled. That's possible. That's possible. They're, they're better hydrated. Uh, sure. Yeah. Just that, yeah, that, that weird turn. And it's, yeah, like you said, it's so And did it feel bear. a little racist that they real even though the Yangs were the savages, the bad guys, they were so much more developed than the Kalans that we spent most of the episode with? Yes. Yeah. Like, why? <laughs> Valid question. Uh, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Like, I'm looking at the IMDb page, and of course we've got Cloud William by Roy Jensen, Ciro, Iron Kelly. Then we've got Wu, mm-hmm. Cone Villager. Right. Like, they were with the Cones a long time. Where's right. everybody else? Right. Wu well, played by the like Kino. And the name doesn't make sense because... It's not like they were practicing communism, or at least we no. never we never get to. Well, we assume they are because it's exactly the same. <laughs> so they're Chinese, and it's it's an agrarian society, obviously, because they haven't evolved at all. Uh, other than yeah, it. I there aren't many times I will say Insurrection did it better, but Insurrection did it better. <laughs> it's not a great film, but it was better than this version. Yeah, I, uh, the disease thing. There's some really interesting things here, but like I liked Insurrection. Picard fell in love with the woman, and then we had the longer discussion mm-hmm. and the exploration of the concept a little yes. more. Yes, yeah, and obviously with a movie you can do that, but yeah, sure. I, I thought, like I said, I thought there was so much going on early on, and then. Yeah. It's such a disappointing left turn. And then for 15 then. minutes, we're with the Yanks. Yeah. And Reading the Declaration of Independence. Yeah. I, and I, I guess that points to something we've talked about a lot before. Is like, have there been no other great documents no. uh, for Earth or anything? The Declaration and the Bible. Those yeah, are the two that's things. It. That's it. Which, of course, had a picture of Spock in it. Yeah. Which As the devil. I, <laughs> that, or the devil's minion or whatever. None of it. It just... Yeah. Uh, again, that said, there were a lot of things I liked up until then. Uh, and uh, like I said, with that disease, like at first it feels like, oh, this is going to be the disease of the week. But, yeah. uh, but it turned into something, a more interesting, interesting thing. Um, I feel bad that Keith wasn't here because there was a lot of Prime Directive talk, there which was. he would have loved. He would and have a lot loved of that. the battle music. All Sprinkle was a little bit of Star Circle Banner. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and well, and the, and the worst part of all that stuff at the end, I mean, not the worst part, but the, one of the other things over there is Shatner being his Shatneriest oh, man. at the end, and it's it just yeah, and like I said, coming back to this episode, that's all I remembered, and then like I said, the first forty minutes, I'm like, oh, okay, I forgot about all that. Oh, okay, this is a nope, it's still there, the part that I did not like. And there's some weird sexism in it. I mean, the costumes, of course. Sure. Which we'll get to oh, that. Yeah. To I, uh, yeah. But, but there was also a really odd scene where this cold girl woman brings McCoy food, and he's like, gives her a double take, like, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and that goes that. nowhere. That's all uh, it is. It's just oh, like, you're right. You're right. Like, yes. there could be a whole subplot there. Nope. It's just McCoy oogling her. Yeah. Uh, her. Yeah, and now we're at the fashion. <laughs> fashion. <laughs> Uh, I wrote down it's the uh, what are we, the planet of uh, oh the planet of women in half shirts because no woman on the planet wore an entire shirt 
Um, and uh, again, they were lovely ladies. I'm not complaining, but oh no, it was... not at all. I mean, Irene Kelly. Yeah. Um, at least she got to be a little tough. But immediately, yeah. my mind's going to like Raquel Welch in some movie. I like, actually wrote down Raquel Welch, uh, 10 million years BC. That's yeah, exactly that's what, her what the outfit, outfit looked like. Yep. And it was so much less than what the guys were wearing. Yep. That it just is like that's not practical. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it... Yeah, and the the comms were all wearing these heavy. Yeah. Heavy com- oh, I guess the the Yang, the Yangs were too. Yeah. But I, not the women. I, it's weird that as. I guess it, in 1966, it makes sense. Maybe somebody would be like, Yanks? That sounds like Yanks. Yankees. But nowadays, no. Nowadays, no. And no. I don't even think that. I don't even Yankees think that. Yankees are not the we throw around. If you hear Yankees now, you think of the New York Yankees. You think of, people think of baseball. No, uh, Either yeah. that or I think the race of South Civil War. Oh, well, yeah, sure. Yeah. That's the other yeah. one thing I yeah. think Yankee of. go home. Yeah, that, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, but... Yeah. Uh, again, that said... Uh, I like the Sula and Uhura were in charge, and I, and I like that they did the same exact shot both for both their scenes. Essentially, <laughs> like, hey, we're gonna do both these, and you guys are yeah. done. Yeah. You're released. Well, you I guess Sulu, Sulu beamed down, but yeah, right. Um, yeah. <sighs> oh, that's the same thing I talked about. Captain's Gone Wild is is a big problem in Starfleet. It sure is. They need some better mental health options. Or evaluations. This is why they add a um, counselor in the next generation. You gotta have somebody there to keep the captain exactly. Because look at all the, all, the, all the terrible things that happen. One of them loses it. They, That's why we got Troy. Aren't right. any crazy captains <laughs> the next gen? <laughs> uh, a lot of the stuff I liked actually was the fighting. Um, they didn't use stunt doubles. Yeah, it looks so yeah. much better without the stunt doubles. Uh, Kirk did a lot of. Uh, Shatner's doing a lot of shoulder rolls and jumping and all and that. Judo chops. Judo chops. Two chops to the neck. He goes down too, too easy from one judo chop from Tracy. I, that I I refuse to acknowledge and believe. I, I I don't believe I don't I don't count that as canon. I like the move though where he hooked his feet and then Tracy like yeah. had to pull him back and flip him and like that was pretty cool. Yeah, no, I liked I liked all their fight scenes. Actually, my alternate episode is the two of them just fighting for like 15, 20 minutes <laughs> in the middle, just like the the battle and they live because I, I I wanted that battle that fight to keep going, uh, but and the yeah. only funny part kind of sort of related when Kirk's fighting the the Yangs in the jail cell yeah and Spock gives uh, Sarah the yeah. nerf pitch and Kirk's like I why, I wish you could teach me that he's like I've tried I love that moment I wrote wrote down Spockety because the whole time in the jail cell he's just throwing out yeah one line do this captain yeah <laughs> do this captain are yeah. you okay captain Try uh, harder, Captain. I advise, yeah, yeah, I advise you to blah blah blah. And man, those jail cells are weak if they could just twist the bars out. <laughs> yeah, I guess the the Yangs are very strong. And then he knocks Kirk out with it for yeah. seven hours and eight minutes. Right. I don't know what the Starfleet concussion protocol is because Kirk probably should have taken a couple plays off, but he was. I did have a, the seven hours eight minutes reminds me. I did have an issue with how they were counting years and stuff, and like how are how many. How old are you? Well, I've seen this many years right. of the whatever. Well, that comes every 11 years. I'm like, so are we talking Earth years? Are we talking... What, As we what makes discuss. a year? Yeah. So, okay, maybe it's been 400 and whatever years on this <laughs> on planet, Earth. but maybe it's only 30 years on Earth. We that's don't right. Know what the that's right. Is. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. a good point. <laughs> like, I just felt like, it, again, they Earthized everything, which of, of course, feels yeah, dumb. Well, and it's that thing of, and I thought about, you know, I wish they... I wish they'd come up with stories... <laughs> Where they landed on planets that were more advanced. Yeah. Or that were Starfleet planets. Yeah. Um, Budget. Right. And that's why it's like, oh, we still have this set from the Menagerie or from the, some Western that's going to be next door. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, that makes sense, I guess. And But all the... I mean, they reuse the Enterprise sets from the beginning with the ghost ships. So. Yeah, and I think there's a more interesting, and, we'll, and there will be some, uh, eventually we'll get to some, but more interesting middle ground than going back to Earth, the things that happen on Earth, and, and, and you know, everything's the 1800s. I, you know, a Western set, I guess is what I should say. They, yeah. uh, almost every place they land, it's, you know, Return of the Archons, et cetera, et cetera, is like a Western set that, that was, wasn't being used, so. Yeah. Um, uh. Not a problem with the spin-off so much. No. No. Um, I, uh, McCoy had a line at the end where he says, uh, 
about his experiences that evil usually triumphs unless good is very, yes. very careful. And I, I like the idea that, that, that just that one acknowledgement, like, mm, you know, evil, you, evil wins quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the good guys don't. I don't know. Kirk wins also. quite a bit. He does. <laughs> but, but yeah. But I would like that one little, little, little nugget thrown in there. I liked all the water softener salt at the, <laughs> the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I, my first thought was the salt vampire's back. <laughs> I read something, and I, I should have followed up, I should have read again, but Galloway, who gets killed in this episode, appears in several more episodes later. Another the same one? actor, yeah. So, I saw it, Leslie in this episode. Yes. And oh, the God, same guy who played Galloway, he's in several episodes in that same character. In fact, he may have died in another episode when he just keeps showing up. Oh, man. <laughs> as different people, but I... I we take Galloway, David L. Ross. Yes. Ugh. We're recording this in Galloway, Ohio. What a terrible day to <laughs> say for this location. Uh, David Ross was also in Rocky Two. I, I found out. He was. Yeah. I see that. As a Although he's best known for Star Trek. Yes. Yeah. Where he did nine episodes. Yeah, well, there you go. As Galloway, Johnson, or Guard. Um, <laughs> It looks like this may be... No, this is his last one. He's in a couple more. Uh, he's in Day of the Dev, and he's in Turnabout Intruder. Oh, that's right. That's right. But he's in Trouble Tribbles City. He's in Trouble Tribbles and City on the Edge of Forever. I mean, he's got some iconic yeah. episodes in his credits. Yeah. Of course, he was first in Miri. Oh, well. So, <laughs> yeah. Speaking he died of... in the Galileo 7 because he was in the Galileo 7. Uh, uh, there you go. Who's chief in that? So oh, not, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Miri, another planet, very Earth-like. No. Very Earth-like. Yeah. Because all the planets... I mean, I feel like in Next Gen, they kind of do a little retconning where they're like, yeah, this one, but Ellie Gray seeded all these worlds, so that's right. why all the races are right. so similar. But there's a difference between similar and exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. And, and, and speaking English and everything <laughs> involved. Yeah, and the... I couldn't tell with the... Uh, the... The Yangs, when they're trying to read the Declaration of Independence and all that stuff, mm -hmm. was that were they could they just not actually read, or they were trying to say it in their language? I think they were having trouble reading. Like they okay. lost the ability, so they were like trying to sound it out yeah. in a bad way. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, I, like I said, I did not hate this episode as much as I had really anticipated. <laughs> No, I think the first two thirds of it, before they got captured by the egg, yeah. was interesting. I was much, yeah, I was, I was into it, and then, yeah, the ending is. Cool. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, Galloway's memory alpha entry. Oh yeah, and it said he was killed on Omega Four by Captain Ronald Tracy. Next paragraph, returning to duty in 2269. Yeah, <laughs> no, no explanation. It just said, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. That's Do you have an alternate that. episode? Uh, it was the long, the long fight. Oh yeah, I wanted, you said yeah, that. I wanted you said to see that. a twenty-minute fight. Yeah, I, I, I actually really enjoyed that. Uh, I mean, that was a decent fight. I would not have enjoyed twenty minutes. Of <laughs> fight scenes uh, to me, I'm usually like, eh, let's just get to the next scene. If I, I, I wanted to keep going where they, the, the especially the one where they're chasing each other and all that stuff, and then Kirk when he's got him cornered, this phaser does a weird thing where he just kind of puts himself up against the the thing behind him, puts his arms up like, yeah. hey, come over here, big boy, and it's weird because then when <laughs> I just put this together when when he finally gets Tracy down on that same scene, and then the the Yangs cap capture them, he looks at him like they got caught having sex. <laughs> yeah, he looks like uh, nothing. Nothing going on here. We're not doing anything. Uh, so maybe there are some homoerotic aspects there that I wow. that I didn't see or that I wanted to see. Maybe, um, but uh, yeah, I, if if it was a twenty minute fight scene, it still might have been better than the where it went at the end. But uh, <laughs> see, I think thinking about it, I think the reason I don't care for the fight scenes in the original series are because there are no stakes whatsoever. Like, there's so many of them are like, to the death, or if the bad guy wins, he will kill Kirk. Right. And you know Kirk's not going to die. Right. So I'm just like, eh, whatever. Whatever. Yeah, it was... Uh, this is on a list of IMDb as the 20 worst Star Trek episode ever. Oh, wow. Putting all the different series together. Oh, wow. Um, I mean, other original series episodes that make the list include The Alternative Factor. Uh, yeah, The Lights of Zetar. Who Mourns for Adonis. Oh, really? Mud's Women. 
The first Bud's oh, episode. Okay. Cat's Paw. Yeah. Uh, and the Children Shall Lead. Oh, yeah. That and The Way to Eden. The Way to Eden ranks number two, worst episode. Those last two might be my two least favorite, but those those are to come in season three. Those are going to yeah, be... Yeah. I actually start from the bottom of the list. Yeah. Um, so as we got further up, those were those supposed were to be worst. worse. Okay, that makes sense than those last two. Uh, they they have uh, The Way to Eden as the second worst episode of Star Trek of all time. Yeah. There's that next one's... episode they've ranked worse, but... What is it? Uh, the Shades of Grey. Oh. Commander Riker comes down with a dangerous alien infection, and he has to reload his memories to treat it. I think I remember that one. I thought, I didn't remember that one being terrible, but maybe. We'll see. Uh, yeah. These are by I am, now, see, that they list the IMBD rankings for each episode, Yeah. but they're not in the same order this list is. Oh. So I feel like this was just a very subjective list that somebody yeah. put together. Like, he works for Adonis as a 7.1 rating out of 10. And they oh. still put it on this list. So, because I, I don't remember who mourns for Nas being that bad either. We didn't love it, but we didn't no. hate it. No. Although, Trust me, some of those third... Alternative uh, Factor has a 5.8 rating, which is way too high for that episode. <laughs> um, cool. Ranking. This, where do we want to rank this episode? Uh, I'm thinking closer to the bottom, but I don't know. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've, had some, we've had some bad ones. Of, uh, um... But. Friday's Child. Let's start there. That's about five or six. Oh, that's at the a bottom. similar in terms of the the planet and stuff. I, yeah, I might. Uh, I might rate this one a little just above, a notch above. A notch above Friday's Child. Yeah, certainly the one section of it was yes. better than Friday's yes. Child. Yes, the, the Friday's Child didn't have the lows that they said. I don't think it had the highs. It didn't. Have, you're right. It didn't have the yeah. highs. That's what makes it hard to rate this episode. Like, I yeah. wish we could split this episode in half. I know. Because I feel like if we just did before they get captured by the Yanks, it'd be like 9 or 10. Like, yeah. decently high. I think it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, episode. I mean, I could easily rank that up. Uh, Not as high as Doomsday Machine or Iron Mud. But, no. But I'd say slightly For below that. that. Yeah. Uh, certainly better than a piece of the action, the change. Like, I would put it up there. But with the Yang yeah. parts, uh, I put that down with Cat's Paw. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. We're That's... going from, like, seven or eight on the list to the bottom of the list. Yeah, that last stretch might be the worst stretch we've watched Yeah, so far. So, okay, so we're talking about being a little bit about Freddy's Child. Yeah, what's next? Wolf in the Fold? <laughs> I have... I, I, what's, what's above Wolf in the Fold? The Deadly Years. Mm, wow, this is this is a tough stretch. I can't get a terrible ending out of my head, so <laughs> I'm gonna blow all of these. I think that's I'm fair. To see what you're, I think where you're landing. I have a hard time putting it much above. I it's probably not better than def, de, not better than the Deadly Years. Although they have they, it's interesting because this episode has all those. It has the disease, and then the right. Friday Child has the uh, primitive and the prime directive, and what was the other one in there? Uh, uh, the dead uh, Wolf in the Fold. Wolf in the Fold, that's yeah. right. Which is it's kind of a fun episode. Yeah. Uh, I'd probably put it below Wolf in the Fold. Above Friday's Child, below Wolf in the Fold. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and just go with you on that one because yeah. I am conflicted because of the the dichotomy of how I know, and I I just remember Friday's Child the last forty minutes us being bored, yeah, or thirty that's minutes true. I should say, but and okay, okay, and we haven't talked about this at all. This episode's called the Omega Glory, right? Why? I don't know. Uh, I mean, Omega means end, right? Well, end of I civilization. Guess, and all I can think of was the Omega Man with Charles Weston. <laughs> Um, I mean, I had to go back and look at my IMDb page I've opened to see what the title was while I was ranking it, yeah. because I did not remember what this was called. And the planet is Omega-4. Oh. So that's why it's the okay. Omega Glory? I mean, Ugh. and I don't get why Glory is part of the title. <laughs> Originally, you mentioned it was offered by a pilot, and a Roddenberry had titled it The Omega Story. Oh. Um, and McCoy hadn't been created, so there was a different ship surgeon. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But. Uh, so, it's one thing I, I, I just now think about it. So, if the Exeter's out there and its whole crew's dead and their cabin disappeared, how come. Is that what they were sent out there to look for? I, that, I don't remember the beginning of the episode like, now. I should it was probably mentioned at the beginning. I, I guess it remember. probably was, and we just. 
Uh, responding to a distress signal. Okay. So Tracy could have been there that long if they were responding. That's to what her. I'm thinking. Unless he, yeah. But he had to be there long enough to know to, to have get, to some know one and stuff. yeah. And well, I mean, it could be a week. He could have got the land land in a week. That's it takes true. starships a while to travel. Well, in in the Omega years, it could he could have been there for forty Omega years. Oh my God. <laughs> That's, uh... Yeah, there are a lot of conveniences in, uh, there's, in this episode. I mean, there are in all fictions and a lot in Star Trek, but mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, there's an interesting story about uh, societies that involve similar ours, but this not was just right at, so much on the nose. That's what's so, that was what's so it, painful about it. It was too it. close. So on the nose. Too close. So on the nose. Um, do you want to change your woman? Oh, who's, who is my woman right now? Uh, Kalinda from the last episode. Oh, no. I won't have <laughs> I think she's going to last until the last episode of the season. Yeah, I was all ready to go with Sarah, and then I re-looked up Kalinda, and now I think i got to stay with Kalinda. Yeah, I mean... I forgot. Sarah was no slouch. No, I liked it a lot because she could kick your butt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I liked her outfit, yeah. as sexist as it was. Yes, yeah. So, yeah, we'll stick with Kalinda because, yeah, she was just, yeah. I liked her a lot, too. So are we down to the last two episodes? Two to go? Three. three. We have three to go. We'll All the computers three. next. Yeah. Kirk and a sub crew ordered to test out an advanced artificially intelligent control system, the M5. Oh, I remember this episode. I remember that. Um, written by Roddenberry and DC Fontana. Well, I don't remember the episode real solid. I remember Daystrom, William Marshall. Oh, okay. And then Daystrom will oh, come yeah, back yeah. in the next gen, the Daystrom Sphere and stuff. Oh. Or Daystrom Institute. Um, definitely a... A name that is, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure in this episode they're already regarding Daystrom as famous and important. I think so. But in spinoffs of the 20, 100 years later, they still mention him as like one of the giants. Hmm. Like he's up there with Zephyr Cochran and oh you know. yeah. So yeah, that's I remember Daystrom, and we'll have our whole crew back. Scotty, Sulu, Yahura, and Chekhov are all credited. Yeah. All right, fine. It's been a long time. Yeah. So Ultimate Computer next time. And then we'll have Brand Circuses after that. And then one of my favorites, Assignment Earth. Assignment Earth. I, I know I'm changing my girl that up, so I'm going to spoil that. Yeah, I was going to say. I don't know. I can assure you. I, I, as much as I like Kalinda, I don't know if she stands up to Terry Gar. No, there's no way. No. The Isis the Cat's pretty cute, too. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so When she turns into a woman. Uh, uh, oh, that's right. I forgot. Yes. Oh, about that. Spoiler. So, join us next time for the Ultimate Computer. Hopefully, we'll have a few more people here. Uh, my guess is we will. Yeah. And uh, freedom. <laughs> and live long and prosper. Oh.